So when the car came back, obviously it was bodywork chassis. The engine was already in for Robert, so the next thing really was to start putting together the other fabricated parts. Is it heavy? No, it's not heavy, it's just awkward. I mean, there's been some good challenges, hasn't there? Things like this, I suppose, trying yeah. to still, keep still... that in place. You've got to put two batteries in, because you're going to have some rather large fans set on the front of your radiator. Yeah, the ones on the 13, I think, draw 73 amps on startup, and there's two of them. <laughs> they're all right, all right when they're running, it's just when they go, so okay, off we go. Yeah. So this is a slider intake system, isn't it? Yes. Which is what they ran on the Le Mans cars, is from? This set actually right. was on one of the early XJR6 Le Mans cars, so it has actually been around Le Mans. Wow. So a bit, a bit of vintage there for you. Yeah. But yeah, so it's, it's just basically sliders inside. So you've got a plate which you've got holes in and they correspond with the holes for the inlets. So as you open it up, it opens the inlet, away you go. Well, I stripped all Strip them all down because I was... Oh, they were banky. Yeah. I was told they'd yeah. been sorted, but uh, yeah, when I went to open them the first time, it was crunching oh, a bit. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so there was just uh, muck in there. So it's all been cleaned out. All the, the, they've got stripped needle bearings, which the sliders float on. So they were all thoroughly cleaned, greased up with some WD-40 and uh, yeah, work a lot better now. And the exhaust system's a bit of a work of art, isn't it? Yeah. So that's all been custom, custom made. Oh, so this particular one's got a bypass valve, hasn't it, for the, for the silencer? Yes. So they've got quiet mode and loud mode? Yes. Town mode and country mode. Mm -hmm. Speaking 4 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. A nice first neat, first neat time system. we fitted that, so it's, it's going to be interesting. But certainly the silencer, uh, that went through a decibel check on the 13 at Brands Hatch. And the guy didn't even put the meter on it. He said, is, is it running? And the customer went, yeah, it's running. He went, all right, and off you go. So we know that's going to be quiet, so that'll get us through the IVA. Um, and then, yeah. Obviously, non-silence is just open. Yeah, I mean, much... some of the gases are still going to go through the exhaust, but a lot of it will get diverted down through the valve um, and then straight out the back. So nice and noisy. Sounds good. I like it. <laughs> well, the loud noises save lives, apparently. Yeah, they do. They do. They do. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Monday morning and another job. Temporarily fitted all the bucket panels into the car. Just today, we're going to make a cover panel for all of the electrics. That's all marked out. So I'm going to cut that, fold it, shape it, and then weld it. So then it was a question of building up the fuel system. Brett decided he wanted to go with uh, the blue and red fittings, um, which posed a slight problem because they mark easily when you put them together. Um, so each one had to be, to each half of it had to be taped and put together gently, but we basically made up the whole system. So here we are doing the fuel system. Down, don't know how to go. Loads. So basically, I'd like to mock up all of my connectors first so that I know I've got the correct connectors, the angles, etc. So when you start doing the job, then at least you know it's going to come out right. I think it's going to look quite pretty. So, a little bit more progress. I've got pressure gauge in. And the fuel regulator. 
a custom bracket. You want to move it over as tight as possible. You're looking good. So today's little job, folding up a tray. We're well done with all this. We're making the assembly of fuel pumps, etc. It's all going to get a bit tight. So our next job is to make that some support wings so we can weld it all together, rivet it, and then start plumbing this lot in once we've bounced it in the car. So here we are, all finished. Heat proofing on the main supply, all clipped in place. And all of the pipe work has now been made and fitted, all dry fitted. So ready for final fitment, bit of bracketry. Everything good to go. So the fuel rails were already on and then we've got feed this is your feed in from the fuel pumps feed out into a fuel gauge pressure gauge and into a regulator and then back into the swell pot the swell pot's fed by two lift pumps and we use a bosch uh, high pressure pump for the fuel in fuel tanks are in each side of the chassis uh, they're aluminium baffled, uh, vented and everything. So they then are joined together with a, a service tank, which has got anti-surge in it. So that should always be full of fuel. Uh, and the excess fuel from the swell pot is fed back into that tank. Uh, we've got filters, we've got non-return valves, lots of different bits and pieces. So because this is all fuel, you're then looking at the next stage, which is uh, trying to keep that cool. So we're now building a twin wall firewall, which will be uh, covered with heat proof material, but we also want it so that it can be removed easily should we need to get to any part of the engine uh, and access to electrics, water pump, spark plugs and everything else. So that is slowly being made up now. We've got one going on the other side as well. There'll be simple bolting, a couple of bolts here, the bracket at the front and the bracket at the rear, and then that should protect us. We've made the exhausts up. These are stainless steel tube exhausts. Uh, they've been clad in some extract from lava or whatever, I don't know what it is, but it's good stuff. Pain in the ass to work with because it's, it's like fiberglass. So you do it on a, a cool day, not a hot sweaty day. Uh, each set of manifolds takes probably about two, two to three hours to do. Um, but it works well. There's, there's different coatings you can normally do on the exhaust. Well, I prefer to use this because you can run this on a dyno and within about five minutes, you can actually touch the exhaust. Um, it works out well. Um, so yeah, it's slowly, slowly build it up. And then obviously, as I've said before, you make something up to mount your fuel pumps and then you've got to think, well, what am I doing afterwards? How's it all going to work? Um, so we're slowly getting there. The next big job was, was doing the batteries, uh, mounting the batteries in and then running all the battery cables together, running the earths, and from there we can now start to finalise the electrics. Uh, the electrics are, rear of the electrics fuse box and everything is in there, and it's accessed from behind the front seat, which is in the cockpit area. So all your fuses and relays are in there, and then eventually we'll have an ECU unit, which will drop into this area here, and then the cover panel over there, but it'll have an access hatch on it as well. So all of the main electrics that you would want to get to are centralized behind the passenger seat. 
Well, it's been a busy couple of days running all the electrics. Yeah, ECU. Here we are. Let's do a few cables that need wiring in at some point. So, summing up the the uh, what we've seen so far, we've got the panel in heat deflector. All the battery cables run, batteries are mounted. Cooling system is pretty complete. Fuel system is pretty complete. Um, moving around the other side, again, you got the heat deflector shield that's been made, fitted. Fuel system's all in and complete. Batteries mounted this side. I removed the oil. Uh, the, the fuel filler uh, just to get access to the side because there was a lot going on um, but yeah pretty happy with the progress so far um, so moving forward next major job is making the centre console um, but part of that is also handbrake assembly fitting the brakes um, and working out where we're going to put the handbrake uh, we've also got to make a gear shift tower got spaghetti junction down there which is basically all the wiring that's needed from the front end of the car for the dash switches etc so there's going to be a lot of stuff coming into play um, over the next sort of two months um, to get the car nearly ready